minutes now. Bunch, oh, sorry, Brian, not bunch. Group. My head of the group at 6.40. I think and it's the, the current quick step with Masnada and Knox. I think the biggest bunch will be the group Eto today. You could get about um, 70 or 80 riders in that. Yeah. Again, we, we said at the start of the day there'll be a lot of the race that we won't see. And then there'll be a lot of frantic riding going on back there today too. Brothers in arms in the Gruppetto coming across. Well, hats off, Giacone Quickstep. They've managed to have three riders in here, looks like Honoré, Masnada and, uh, of course, James Knox. So three riders leading the, the way for the pink jersey, so they do have some numbers. Watching Clark again here, but thinking about the Koenig quick step, if, if you remember, they were originally building up to look after Remco Evenepoel. And we don't know how Remco Evenepoel would have gone. We knew he was on top four, and I'll tell you what, any doubts about whether he had a team to support him or not? Because in that situation, Almeida would have been domestique as well. They would have had a mighty team to support him. The way they are riding at the minute really is hat-off stuff. Tactically, but I went so far. OK, a couple of days ago in the stage that Sagan won, Almeida was pretty much isolated a, a little bit on his own, but they managed to kind of bring it back. That was the only slight kind of weakness that, that I've seen, but tactically they, they, they've been spot on, even today. OK, NTT have, have taken off with 125 kilometres to go, allowing every other rider to, to sit on the wheels, but it hasn't been easy. So, um, tactically, they, they've got it on spot on today. Another jacket for Vincenzo Nibali. All on his own. Question marks about his team today because they've been strong so far and on paper they're strong, but we know that Chicorne has been struggling. He's not been there since the start. But Ambilo was distanced early on too. Brother Antonio, Julien, Bernard. All good climbers on paper, but Nibali was isolated. I think he's one of the first leaders to be isolated. You can just see the, the difficulties. See when you get cold hands trying to get your rain jacket on. It's it's just it's just difficult. Oh, not a good day. You wonder how today and the weather as well will influence things in the next two or three days. You know how who recovers well, who's got too cold, who's picked up a cold, it can all influence down the line this sort of stuff. As Brad was making the point, these are guys with. Hardly any body fat prone to sort of picking up illness and problems and, yeah, could influence things down the line as we see Jonathan Narvaez at the front waiting to get his time check to Mark Padun, who was just behind him. Remember, suffering that untimely mechanical. And we're wondering how much time Narvaez has managed to pull out. And here was me thinking that... We know who's going to win the sprint in the end. This is going to turn out to a, a time trial between Narvaez and Padun. Can Padun, you know, bring back the time required to get back to the, the front? And then we'll have a sprint, but for the moment, it's a time trial for the win. It's a pursuit with Padun after Narvaez. Third in the pursuit. Simon Clark at almost three minutes now. Now here is the rider from Donetsk. Bahrain McLaren who took a stage win remember with Nibali didn't they? The other year. This year yet to get anything out but riding really well. And after a little scare where we didn't see him for a while, Bill Bow is back in that group with Penn Steiner. Um, the highest placed loser so far in the GC today, and looked to be losing quite a lot, was the man in 12th place, Ino Zakarin. We still have 20 kilometers to race. And we've seen a lot of leaders isolated, and untimely mechanical could cost you the race today. It's the importance of having those teammates around you. It's almost half a minute to Mark Padun after that mechanical. Looks strong, 
has ridden fantastically well all day. He's been good on all terrain, but he's suffered the huge, huge misfortune of picking up a mechanical at just the wrong time. And Jonathan Narvaez has taken almost half a minute. 18 kilometers to go. It isn't nailed on, but the Ecuadorian is the huge favorite to take the stage, Brian Smith. It depends how he's riding it. Looking at the way he's riding it, he is going flat out. When you find yourself in front and you're, the rider you're with has had that mishap and he's been told to ride full gas, it's, it's whether he can keep this go, going all the way to the finish or is Padun riding a, a better pursuit? Is he going to be able to can I hold that a little bit back that he can go the full 17 kilometers or is Narvaez just trying to kind of break his will because he'll be getting time checks 28 seconds and if it goes over 30 seconds it's so actually play with your mind a little bit that you're no going to to catch but it does look as, uh, as if Padun is a bit more composed than, than Narvaez I wouldn't say it was over yet well Narvaez likes this part of the world doesn't he winning a stage and winning overall at uh, Copia Barcari. We've been through Soliana Rubicone today, haven't we? He was second on the stage there. Second only on the day to Andrea Bajoli of the Koenig Quickstep. That race taking place at the start of September while we were watching the first week of the Tour de France. And the day after we had a stage that started in Riccione, finished in Riccione, just down the road from where we're going to finish today, and he won it. He then took the overall as well, finishing third the day after in Forlì. There's something about Emilia-Romagna that Jonathan Narvaez enjoys. He will remember it forever if he picks up a win today. And Ecuador. Suddenly a nation coming out of nowhere and making its mark on the last two Giri d'Italia. In fact, the last three because Carapaz came here the year before and was picking up stages as well, wasn't he? suddenly making quite a contingent in the peloton. We've had strong riders from Ukraine before, but as I said, it's been quite a while, hasn't it? Yaroslav Popovich for a long, long time was one of the top domestiques in the world. It's been 16 years since uh, a rider won a stage at the Giro d'Italia for Ukraine. And Mark Patun, well, he's pulled back a couple of seconds. 26 with 15 kilometers to ride, all of them on the flat. Just seen there that uh, Narvaez just had a, a look behind, so he's feeling it. Both of them are feeling it at the moment, and but I just think it. Pardon is, is is riding a little bit more composed than Narvaez. He should be getting the, the time checks uh, from the the car behind, 26 seconds, and that's probably why he's looking behind. He's um, he's worried. He's given it everything he's he's got at the moment, but. Padon is, is still trying to come, just going the wrong way around this roundabout. I didn't know why he just went left there. Or maybe a few nerves coming in. We know that Dario Cioni has been in the car alongside Matteo Tosato. They're the sports directors here for Ineos Grenadiers. In the meantime, Padun, well, I'm not sure who's up the road with him because we saw Pelizzotti further back with the bunch, didn't we? And he's gone the right way around here, Brian, so that should be half a second or so back. Yeah, he went, he kept to the left there, went probably the fastest way around that, um, that roundabout, but yeah, he's still, he, he's looking a little bit laboured, bigger gear. The thing is, in these situations, you, you can't really panic. You'll be able to see the, the car in front and this pursuit is going to go on for the for the final 14 kilometers here. It's not a done deal yet. And I know that a lot of people watching at home, given what happened to Padun, he'll have a lot of supporters, I think. He'll have a lot of people cheering him on, given the un unfortunate incident. Yes, yeah, one of these things that, um, you know, if it had happened probably 50 kilometers ago, you know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't take advantage, but... You know, you're the, the, under race conditions now, racing incident, a puncture. But it does look as if Padun is starting slowly over this railway bridge, starting to, to close the gap a little bit more now. Oh, we're going to see more excitement then. Our destination today is Viale Carducci in the centre of Cesenatico, not too far from the Marco Pantani monument. 
and Padun has taken it to 20 seconds in the latest time check. Oh, 13 and a half k's to go. It's game on. He'll be getting those time checks. He'll be getting encouragement, but you just have to, to pace this a little bit. Just pace it and he'll get back. So it needs a calm head in the car behind. 18 seconds. Now, what would you be telling this man? This man's got no choice. He just has to keep going full gas. He just full gas, time trial, keep on encouraging him. You know, now to 15 seconds now. I, I just think that he snatched it a little bit. But done, it's got, it's always easier to have a, a rider in front of you. You have to get there. If you want to win the stage, you have to get there. And you just have to keep on encouraging Narvaez. And that's what the NS Caro will, will be doing at the moment. To, but he's looking a little bit stressed. He's looking behind. He's making, maybe making the wrong choices around some of the, uh, the roundabouts. 13 seconds, you see the motorbike being taken out the gap there. He's got two cars to chase as well before he gets to Narvaez, who looks around yet again. I suppose if you're thinking in Narvaez's favour, it's better for him to be caught now and recompose himself before the finale, rather than to be caught with a couple of kilometres to go and his head fall off and that's it. That's a big call for, a, for the car to say, just, just ease up now, you've got a faster sprint and the two years come into the finish together, then you're going to win this stage. It's a, it's a big call. I think you have to keep on encouraging and hoping that, um, you know, Padun is using a lot of energy to, to come back. He is. You saw that huge puddle on the right side that Narvaez had to avoid by going over quickly to the left. We look back to the Magliarosa group and nothing doing here. It's just down to the Koenig quick step to control things. Peter Seri back on as well now. So three men for Joao Almeida. What a performance from that team. They really are stepping up to the plate. And whilst they continue to ride here, is it just ticking the day off now for everybody else? And okay, that's another day done. Bit of damage maybe to others, you know. Might have taken a bit of morale or a bit of energy out of somebody, even if I didn't get any seconds. Well, most of the GC contenders are there, so they'll be happy. Another look behind from uh, Narvaez. He's getting worried. They pulled the team cars out, and this mm. gap getting a lot closer now. So <laughs> when we thought they would roll into town and possibly have a, a bit of a ding-dong, a bit of a sprint, this is uh, fascinating stuff, and this will continue on. 11 and a half kilometres to go, and the gap's gone down from 28 seconds, now just to 10. At the bottom of your picture, the rider from Ukraine, from Donetsk, Mark Padun of Bahrain McLaren, suffered a mechanical, had to change his bike, and has chased down two thirds of his gap of half a minute. Is it to be Mark Padun? Is it to be Jonathan Narvaez? It looked as though they were going to have a two-up time trial to the line together. But a mechanical got in the way of the rider from Bahrain McLaren. And another second is eaten out of the gap. They've taken all the cars and motorbikes out the gap. And Narvaez continues to give his all. It is wet through on the roads of Emilia Romagna. It's been dramatic on the training roads of the late Marco Pantani. And we head to Cesenatico for our first stage finish in the Giro d'Italia here for 10 whole years. Who's it going to be, Brian? <laughs> I don't know at this stage. It's still 10 and a half kilometres to go. It, it does look like Padun is going to make it. But how much, at what cost? And it's the same with the Narvaez. That both of them look as if they're, they're given 100% now. And you can see Padun, he's rocking and rolling. Um, you know, now's the chance that to get a rain jacket from uh, Hendrik Rudante in a, in a team car. He must be absolutely frozen, but, you know, the big the big uh, attack from Vivo never really happened, but back to the front. I knew this was going to be a bit of an epic day and an, an exciting finish, but I didn't expect this. First swing back in the direction of Narvaez we've had. It's gone from nine to 10. Up until now, it's always been Padun gaining seconds back. 
You can see he's pedaling a huge gear there, Brian. He's rocking and rolling, and you know, from what what I said a few kilometres ago, he's looking a little bit more composed. Now he's starting to to show the signs of of fatigue, as you would. So this is this is holding actually going up another second now. So the pendulum is swinging a little bit more towards Narvaez now, and that's what he'll be getting in his ear. He'll be getting encouraged. You've got him now, you know, starting to go up. It's starting to go up, and. Mentally, if it goes up to about 15 seconds, Padun, the way he's uh, rocking all over the bike at the moment, it's mentally he is in torture. There'll be a lot of sympathy for Mark Padun after what happens with the mechanical. We all know it's part of bike racing. Looking like he was going to get back on, and now it's just ebbing away again. 9k still to go though. And Narvaez, the young man from Ecuador, just 23 years of age, already a national champion as he turned pro. I think he was still a teenager, late teens when he won that. In the quick step, another of the Axian Hagen Sperman alumni, alongside Almeida and Guerrero. To be at the front and challenging of this Giro, and he's added another second to his lead. Add another one for good measure. 13. It's swinging the other way, and Padun is the one who's looking like he's swinging. Back in this bunch. The Maliad also just pouring a drink all over him. Is that a warm drink? I would think so, yeah. Keep an eye on that. Okay, the damage that this stage has done, we might not really understand until a couple of days down the line. Brad mentioned, didn't he, that there was no extra rain jacket here for Joao Almeida. At the front, there are extra seconds yet again for Narvaez. It's up to 15. He's winning the tug of war here. Yeah, now he's looking a little bit more conforce, uh, composed. He was looking a bit stressed, a bit panicky. Kept on looking behind. This man was uh, coming and he got to just under 10 seconds, but it's gone out now. It does look as if Padun gave a good shot. He's rocking and rolling at one point all over the bike, pushing a bigger gear, and that's just dead in the legs a little bit for him. So it does look as it's all over for Padun, and uh, Narvaez is going to have his stage. Wow. Incredible. 22 seconds now. Just look at the difference in the cadence now. Narvaez is, is, is still pedalling with some good cadence. He's still got some punch in his leg, and Padun is just rocking and rolling all over the gear. Grows again. And Narvaez looking like he has this one in the bag. 7 kilometer to go sign. Those of you tuning in now, it's almost seven minutes to the Magyaroza. We've had action there. A very late attack in the last, what, 150 metres or so, that last climb from Pozzo Vivo after his team worked all day. But everybody cold, everybody wet through, everybody miserably out of gas. As Mark Padun has the same feeling, I think. He'll have a lot of sympathy, I think, as well, Brian, after that mechanical. I think so. Um, I think you hear that from Narvaez as well. No, nobody. Everybody wants to win a stage, of course, but nobody kind of really wants to kind of win like that. Six kilometers to ride, and it's turning into a procession for Jonathan Narvaez. But as we've seen, mechanicals can happen. You can run out of gas suddenly as well. It's looking better and better for the young man from Ecuador. Mark Padun got the gap down to within nine seconds. Back in the Magliarosa group, and there's maybe a body or two more. Brian, nothing doing here. No, I, I, I didn't expect it. Um, 
Posavivo and his team set up a, a good day, which could have been a, a great final. But I just think the, the weather got in the way with a lot of the riders, and you know they were really struggling in the cold. Half a minute. This is the biggest gap that Narvaez has had since that mechanical for Badoon happened. And Ineos Grenadiers are on their way to stage win number three of this Giro. What a way to react to Geraint Thomas having to go home so early. Still means that only six teams in this race have, have won stages of the 22 teams that started. We've lost two teams, so we're down to 20, but still only six teams have won stages here at the Giro. Another K ticks by. We're about to see the famous skyscraper of Cesenatico in the distance in a minute. Building that sticks out like a bit of a sore thumb in the middle of town. But once he sees the Marco Pantani statue, he will be a stage winner in a Grand Tour. And it's only his second Grand Tour. Came to the Giro d'Italia last year. Didn't get inside the top 50 on a stage. He's here. And he's about to get inside the top one. 33 seconds on Padun. And the gap increases. He's 600 metres up ahead of the road. Jonathan Manuel Narvaez. Sign from Quick Step a couple of years ago. Remember, last year he put in a superb job on the final day of Paris Nice for Egan Bernal. This is his own opportunity. He took it in Italy in his warm up race here at the Coppia Bartali on the same roads of Emilia Romagna and just a few kilometers down the road from where he won there he's going to win here at the Giro 40 seconds and a lot of sympathy for Mark Padun Bahrain McLaren will keep searching they've still got their riders in the GC they are still having an excellent Giro d'Italia today well the stars did not align I'm afraid three and a half k's to go you get the sense now that only some bizarre incident, like the one we saw for Padun, could stop things here for Narvaez. I think that's why he's, he's still giving 100% here, mouth uh, wide open. He knows that you know, he could lose this with a puncture, and he'll know that he's got 41 seconds, but when you come this far, you, you don't want to put anything to chance. You just want to give 100% in the last three kilometres to pull off this famous victory. Three kilometers to go for Jonathan Narvaez. Into town he comes, and Chesin article with all of its history, awaits. Jonathan Narvaez riding to a stage win at the Giro d'Italia. It has been a horrific day weather-wise. Riders on their last legs yet again. Showing strength to go away from the rest in a 14-man breakaway. Once more, Ineos Grenadiers had a rider in there who made it. You have to buy a ticket if you want to play the game. And it looks as though for the third time in 12 days, they're going to win the jackpot. Hadoun now at three quarters of a minute. And the miserable weather we've seen all day has finally reached the coast. Hasn't quite blown up as we thought it was going to do, Brian. They're going to get a very similar feeling to what we saw on Sunday. Yeah, I think so. Um, I think the, the weather has played a, a massive part yet again today. I think the, the teams look, looks as if you know they played their points to put the riders in the breakaway. NTT were a team that really kind of took the fight up and it really split this race to pieces, but it does look as if pretty much all the, the GC contenders are, are in, in the uh, pink jersey group behind Montilla 
a couple of years ago, Ecuador had never won a stage of the Giro d'Italia. Now they're going to have a third winner. Carapaz took a stage, came back last year to take the overall two. Caicedo, the national champion at the moment, did it. And now it's going to be a former national champion. Still a young man making his way. But now about to hit the headlines, Jonathan Narvaez, who is going to do the business. The Ineos Grenadiers marching on to the final kilometre. They might have thought it was a forlorn hope getting in the breakaway at a point today. The Magliaros a bunch look very threatening. But a couple of brave souls plodded on. Padun and Narvaez, the former having a mechanical, the latter with a 50 second lead going into the final kilometre. And it is a victory procession for the man from Playón de San Francisco. Ineos Grenadiers to pick up win number three of the Giro d'Italia that didn't look too clever for them when poor Geraint Thomas was forced to go home. They've regrouped, they've rebounded, and they're going to take more success. Heartbreak for Mark Padun behind. A brilliant ride from him. An untimely mechanical will cost him. But after five and a half of the hardest hours he's ever ridden on a bike, Jonathan Narvaez is about to write his name in Giro history. On the roads that saw the late great Marco Pantani grow up, it's another coming of age for another big promise. The Ineos Grenadiers do it in the rain. They braved everything, and it's their young man, Jonathan Narvaez, to do it. 23 years of age, and now a Grand Tour stage winner. Jonathan Narvaez, Viva Ecuador! Second man from his nation to take a victory at this Giro d'Italia. And another new nation making its way in this sport. Ukraine have had history with this race a long time ago. Not going to be their day today, though, I'm afraid. There'll be big applause for this man as he crosses the line, though. He looked just as strong as Narvaez, to be fair. And you had to feel. Got it back to nine agonizing seconds. Then the elastic, elastic snapped. And Mark Padun, nothing he can do. A super ride from the man who was also in the breakaway today. Bahrain McLaren are going to end with a second place. And it's going to be second on the day to Mark Padun. And at 24, I think he will get another opportunity, Brian. He's looking like a very promising rider. Yeah, it's, it's hard, but at the end of the day, I think he has to accept it. I would have loved to have seen the, the battle in the run-in, but unfortunately that never happened. We saw a pursuit in the run-in, which was uh, won by Narvaez. And behind the Magliarosa group. Group five on the road, according to this graphic. And the Magliarosa himself, Almeida, well looked after by Peter Seri, James Knox and Fausto Masnada. It might be classics weather, but the Koenig Quickstep are looking like a fine GC team here. They're the team with the best numbers. They're the team looking after the Mallaros as if they've been doing it for year upon year. And another day goes by with another difficult test. And we get to Cesenatico with a new name being made in the search for the pink jersey. It's the 22-year-old from Portugal, Joao Almeida, who's gonna keep it for another day. Another challenge almost down. Tomorrow we go to Monselice. A couple of climbs towards the end. Unless something bizarre happens, you'd expect him to stay there. Again, with the weather like this, you never know. The wind has been blowing, hasn't it? What's more today? We go inland tomorrow for the finale, heading up towards the Veneto. 
Philippe Cervia, home to a famous Iron Man, I believe. He's been needed to be made of strong stuff today. My, there'll be some shivering after the race. Those hot showers will be wanted very quickly. 4K still to ride. A bit of a smile there from James Knox. They can believe that they've done it for another day. Some good rides in here as well. As I said, if you're just tuning in, the biggest name in the general classification to fall away today has been Inlud Zakarin. And we saw him go very early on, didn't we, Brian? Not his day at all, both on the descent and on the climb. Yeah, he really did suffer. And OK, on the descent, maybe not the best. We've already uh, noted that over the years, but I think missing a little bit, possibly the weather as well, but really kind of missing on the, on the climbs. He's the only kind of real casualty from today. But the end of the Started day... Started at the end 12th place, didn't he? Yeah, end of the day, it's been a tough day for all. And as you say, po possibly a sprint stage tomorrow. Then we've got the uh, the time trial on Saturday. Then a mountain top finish on uh, Sunday. So still big, big tests for this young man from Portugal in the pink jersey. To make it through tomorrow should be OK, barring any incidents. Then it's into the second time trial of this year's Giro. And it was at the time trial at the start of the race where he really showed how strong he was as well. But after, what will it be, 14 stages then in a Grand Tour, the legs are very different to stage one. And we might see some different results. Theo Gegenhart's had another good day to tick off to. There'll be a celebration at the dinner table with his teammate winning. Gegenhart is going to move up at least a place today because of uh, Ilnud Zakarin falling away. So he'll move up at least to 13th from 14th. We know that Bilbao and Pernsteiner have survived. It's after we had a brief worry on their behalf. There's only 21 riders in this uh, pink jersey group. There'll be groups everywhere. I know that the group F2 will be quite big today and they'll be getting looked after, but, but there must be groups spread out all over the place that might not be getting any rain jackets or anything, not unless they've got them already. Final couple of kilometres for the Maglia Rosa. And a day of defence for the Koenig quick step. Tactically, as Brian Smith was alluding to, they played it really well. Yet again, just letting the gap grow, keeping everything under control, drawing other teams in. It's only because NTT decided to start riding that they lost a couple of their men for the flatter ground. Although the riders hung in very well. And Lerini again lasted a long time. And they're coming to the finish with three riders to surround Joao Almeida. Well, they're finishing with Honoré. Uh, Masnada and uh, James Knox still in this front group and Masnada is another rider that's up in the, the top 10 overall so a good day all round This is Simon Clark well played another good ride in pretty horrible conditions Almost seven minutes down. Looking back again, and only one of those red Bahrain McLaren rain jackets is there. We know they were both wearing red rain jackets because when we saw Bill Bauer return so here's Knox off the back just keep an eye on that as they cross the line we were saying that everybody else in the top 10 had been safe but at the minute either Pernsteiner or Bill Bau is missing from that group chasing on this is Ross Kopf and what a ride that's been as well really aggressive today same for this man it's the same every day when he rides we love him what an entertainer Simon Pullo a Swiss Really making a name for himself at the Giro d'Italia. The 
you can see how much that the Maya Rosa group really has set up a little here now. That's Bilbao in that group. So Pern Steiner may well have just fallen away at the back, we think. Here's the uh, dart to the line. There's Francois Bidal left from the breakaway and, well, they're looking around at each other to see if there is going to be a move. There's a little sprint to the line and you've got to make sure you're not gapped here. There's Guerrero sprinting for points and for places. Remember, all the bonus seconds have been taken out of this, but they are all going to finish together. And only one rider from Bahrain McLaren. I think Pern Steiner might be losing a little bit of time there. We'll wait to confirm that. Bill Baldo stays on the podium. So another day in the Maglia Rosa for Joao Almeida. Another day ticked off and quite a marvellous performance from him and from the winner, Jonathan Narbaez, who has won yet again for that now big cycling nation. Viva Ecuador! Second stage win for them at this Giro. Brilliant. Ineos Grenadiers had their third stage win at this Giro. And they've gone out looking for it in fine fashion. What a way to recover after Garen Thomas having to go home. And the Grenadiers have marched on to victory.